grace, video grace, that we can do justice to what God has done for us. Because bluntly, if you don't understand grace, you really won't appreciate your salvation. And if you think that you're saved in any other way except by grace, then let me be the first to tell you, you're probably not saved. Oh, I know, that probably offends someone. But in video grace, that's what we want to talk about. We want to get down to the brass tacks, you know, the nitty gritty of what's really gone on. What is this thing that we mention of as grace and how do we apply it and what does it involve when it comes to extending to someone else grace for grace? That's something that we're going to look at. It's something that we want to treat so serious that I thought that you know there was no way that we could possibly cover that topic unless we got into it as a devotional series, that we took the time and really explained it in such a way that we got a hold of this thing called grace and began to realize that grace changes everything. And that's the book that we're going to use by Chuck Smith, you know, because really that's what it applies to, is that everything changes because of grace. When you have a proper understanding of grace, when you understand his mercy and why his love endures forever, then it's not just about his love. It becomes more important about his grace, his choice to give you what you don't deserve and spare you what you really do deserve, which is to go to hell. Because you see, you've already been condemned. You did it yourself. The moment you were born, you were condemned. As a matter of fact, nothing you've done since the moment you were born has proven that you're worthy of grace. In fact, everything that you've done from the moment that you were conceived has only demonstrated why you should be condemned to hell, literally. As a matter of fact, you're already condemned to hell. You just didn't know that, did you? Now, God may suspend that sentence depending upon what he chooses to do. God may set aside that sentence depending upon what he wants to do because he's the creator. You see, he created you so he can do whatever he, pardon the expression, damn well pleases. And is that fair? No, of course not. Being created is not fair. It just means that you were created and you don't have a choice in the matter. Now, you have a choice to decide if you want to get saved, which is fine. You know, If you want to get saved, I can understand why you would not want to go to hell because, frankly, I wouldn't want to go there either. But the bottom line is, is you were you know, kind of like created to really do something more than be selfish. And let's be honest, you are selfish. <laughs> so am I. I mean, everybody that's been born from the moment that they cried out in that first gasp of air, they began to think selfishly, act selfishly, and become selfishly. They were all about themselves. Every little baby is after themselves. They want what they want when they want it. They want air. They want water. They want food. They want to be changed. They want to be loved. They want, want, want. Not give. Because you see, the Creator Himself gave. And He demonstrated His love by giving. And He is that type of person, or that type of personality. He gives. And that's why grace is so important to understand the nature of God and the reality of God so that we get a better handle on what he's doing when he says that by grace are you saved and that not of yourselves lest any man should boast because anyone and everyone will always try to justify themselves but the truth is you're already condemned and you're already bound for hell so we need to do something about that we need to kind of figure out a way to get out of hell because we're already heading there and that's pretty obvious I mean it doesn't take a genius to figure out that you can stack up your best, bestest person that you can imagine or that you've ever seen in the world and put it next to the most evilest person and you can say, well, that person's evil and that person's good, so this person must be really good. But yet, when we put your bestest on display, I only have one question. <laughs> Are they perfect? Because <laughs> you see, <laughs> there's only one way to get to heaven. <laughs> Perfection. Be perfect as I am perfect. That's what Jesus said. You know, he said, be perfect. No problem. Hey, if you're perfect, you're there. But, like most of us, you're heading to hell. That's the way it is. So, maybe we better, since we are saved, if you're studying this, or if you're not saved, you need to get saved and then figure this out. 
But as you begin to study this grace thing, maybe we can kind of get a handle on it by going through the study and a devotional way of looking at it so that we'll begin to realize what grace does for us as well as why God extended His grace to us and how grace will change everything in your life as you begin to exercise grace for grace. So medieval grace is all about learning how to give grace for grace. And so we're going to look at this in segments and sections and take it apart piece by piece so that we can better understand it and relate it in a personal way. Because after all, that's what Jesus is. Jesus is personal. And for me, he's real. Now, I don't know what he is for you, but for me, I kind of got to deal with him every day. So if I got to deal with him, I'm going to relate as much as I can to you about how he deals with me. So that way, maybe you'll get a handle on what you're doing and why you shouldn't be doing what it is that you're doing or keep doing what it is that you're doing so you get better at it. You see how that works? <laughs> Maybe. One evening I heard a speech by former Secretary of State, Dr. Henry Kissinger. He told the gathering that his first mistake is mentioned in his autobiography on page 1159. He also noted it was his last mistake. If I were to write an autobiography, my first mistake would probably be found in the prologue to the book, and if not, in the table of contents itself probably misspell the word there. There is no way I would ever try to stand before God on the basis of my own goodness. It's not that I am some rotten, morally depraved individual. It's just that I am nowhere good enough to be acceptable for an absolutely holy God. And that's the basis of why we're condemned. You can stand before a holy God and try to justify yourself. As a matter of fact, you're going to be given full opportunity and full reign to state your case. And believe it or not, by your own words, you'll be justified, and by your own words, you'll be condemned. That's what Jesus said. So, in some ways, you get to plead out your case before God. Now remember, He's a holy God. And I know that a lot of people like to try this ignorance of the law is an excuse, but unfortunately, the same thing that's true here on earth is true in heaven. Ignorance of the law is no excuse when you get to heaven because you need to find out what criteria that God is going to judge you by because, after all, you're going to have to give an accounting for it. Now, you could come up with your own idea. You could try. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But you see, in the court of appeal before God, your justification and your sanctification has already been determined. Now, if you accept God's verdict on it, then great. You can probably find some justification for your own opinion about all the things that Jesus did or didn't do and what you can and can't get away with and why you should be sent to heaven and not to hell. But unfortunately, your opinion doesn't amount to much when it comes to God because he's the one who actually sends you to hell or sends you to heaven. He's the one who actually lets you enter in to perfection of the kingdom of heaven or rejects you as imperfect where all imperfect and all corruptible things will go, which is the lake of fire. So, me personally, I think he's got a point. You know, Everything that's perfect gets to be where perfection is. Everything that's imperfect, just like you would do if you were a craftsman, would want to throw it back into the lake of fire and start over again, so to speak. Unfortunately, because you chose not to obey, you're going to pay a price for that in eternity, and that's torment. For eternity, you'll be in the lake of fire, and you'll suffer. Because that's what the verdict is, and the verdict doesn't go away. They don't change, you know, this eternal punishment. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Because God created us for fellowship. He already created a way and a means with which we could be justified. That we could be extended that which we could not do for ourselves and give us that justification. And he would do it through a redemption process that would be a means of salvation for us to be accomplished that perfection that would one day be achieved if we obeyed and we accepted his way of doing it. And the only way that we could would be through grace. You see, any other way would be our own effort, and it would be an attempt by us to circumvent that which God has done. But because God has done it, we can't earn it and we can't win it. We can only 
ask him for it. And so at some point in time, you're going to have to come to a conclusion about grace. Now hopefully in video grace, you're going to come to that realization that because you've been given grace, you have to give grace to everyone else around you. Because one thing that I want you to see in this whole series is that if you don't give grace, you won't get grace. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you don't love, you're not really going to be loved. Pardon me, but at some point in time, God's going to say, I want perfect. Now, you'll also see how grace changes things. Because once grace has been given to us, then he does work out in us his salvation through us. So there is that opportunity with which, yeah, maybe we are imperfect vessels, but the perfection that's in us will cause us to arrive at our destination that we choose. Now, I'll admit, you know, not everyone wants to go to heaven, and frankly, they can go to hell. They will. There's no doubt about that, no question in anyone's mind. But grace has been extended in such a way that should you choose to follow it and make it an aspect of your life, then legalism, the law, and all these other aspects of some kind of, you know, forcing you into doing something that God never intended you to do or to be, will fall short of your great rejoicing in that with which God has done for you and the acceptance of life that he's given you that you'll be able to live abundantly because of the grace that's been extended to you. Now that's what we're about. So, in this, it may be a lifetime of grace that we extend ourselves through this devotional study of grace. But frankly, I think that the most important thing that we could possibly share and the most important thing that we could talk about and the most real aspect of all that Jesus did for us can be summed up in one word. That is grace. <laughs>